But all these guys, they used to come in and they still had the old truck with like a canvas top and they used to come in the back. Every one of these guys came from either Body, Palo Col, Bedet, Betondo, all in the same area. And they were all ice, they all ended up being ice men. The Bodies were cool with the ice. <laughs> when two Bodies meet, we say, Was your father in ice? Was your, your grandfather in ice? Because we all know that, you know, that. Uh, that's where most of us started, in the ice pit. When everybody came from Altamuda, i say basically 75 or 80% all became icemen. And I guess that's where the, the name came, the Barre's Ice Man. And my father, would, my father's family were farmers, and he, my father didn't like farming. So when he was 16, he came here. Between 1890, right after the unification of Italy, in about uh, 1920, uh, almost four million Italians, Southern Italians, come to the United States, come to America. I went to school, Catholic school, and when I was in grammar school, you know, second, third grade, and uh, I lived about two blocks away. And my father, I was in school, and it was uh, like 12 o'clock recess, and my father came around the corner with the truck, and we had a tailgate in the back, you know? Well, we had the tailgate down. He should have had it up, he had it down. So he went around the corner, right in front of the school, to go two blocks home. And when he ran the corner, all, a lot of the ice on the ground. Now, kegs of ice were 300 pounds. And he was so mad that he stopped the truck. And I saw it, you know, and I'm watching him. And all these kids around, come around, they were watching my father grab the ice, 100, 200 pound pieces grab it up, throw it on the truck, he was so mad. And I was there and I said to the kids, that's my pop. <laughs> that's my pop. Because it showed, you know, such force. <laughs> hundred pounds of coal on your shoulder, 300 pounds, pick it up. They put the ice pick in their teeth. Two or three flights of stairs. And go up five floors, come down, and then go up to five floors. People next door want the same thing. You go up and down twice. We didn't walk. We ran, ran. all the time. Half a cake of ice, if it's melted a little bit, a cake of ice is 300 pounds. We used to cut it down the middle. It's a half a cake is, is 150 pounds. So we, were, we had to deliver a half a cake of ice every morning to this factory. You used to take it, slide it off the dock, put it on my shoulder, I walked around the corner and dropped it. Now I don't think I could pick up half of it anymore. But at 13, I did it. I was about 11, yeah. and I remember Mrs. Hoyt on 813, to up left Park Avenue. <laughs> she felt my muscles. She wanted to see if my muscles were as big as Frank's muscles, because Frank was bigger than me. She said, you'll do all right. You'll work all right out of the, on the truck, Jim. And I think the ice business had a lot to do with it, being in good shape and turning out to be a good athlete. If you call an ice house and say, I want a block of ice, 300 pounds, and I want it brought up two flights of stairs, they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. Very hard to get a piece of ice delivered in New York. 
And I start, I've had fights with Icemen on every ice house in New York because I said to them, you know, how could you not want to deliver a piece of ice? And I tell them about my father, my uncles, my grandfathers were both Icemen. And if you ask them to bring it up the stairs, it takes two men, three men, and they, they have a big, you know, big card. And, like, you know, I feel like my father would, uh, or my grandfather would uh, roll over, as they say. What what was the secret? I, I, I you know I guess uh, macaron, but uh, the chicle pasta, <laughs> and all the good stuff, pasta fazul. No, I, I I don't know. I think the, they were farm stock and very strong people. I, most of them that I know were very strong people.